Hi folks, John here from GMIT Label. Uh, a number of you have asked for uh, uh, if, I, if there's any chance I could do a video on a kind of a uh, quick tutorial on how to use the Zebra Pro Designer software. Uh, in fact, that's uh, what I'm going to do here. Now, in the interest of time, because I try to keep the, the videos between five and seven minutes, and as you know, any software package can be very in-depth, so I'm going to kind of go through this uh, very quick, knowing that any one of you can uh, uh, call me at uh, you know 704-786-0951, or you can go on to www.gmitlabel.com to actually uh, watch the video in the event you pick us up through uh, YouTube. Uh, but I'm going to make the assumption that uh, you already have the package loaded. Uh, generally, you receive a package like this here, Designer Pro uh, software. Uh, you get one CD in there. That CD has the software you need. Uh, just you know, plug it in. Most computers now are auto run. Follow the instructions, accept all the terms and conditions, and then ultimately, when it's all said and done, you'll end up with two icons on your uh, computer. One will be the uh, uh, up here. You'll see where it says Designer Pro 2, and then also the Zebra font uh, downloader. Uh, but anyways, you want the Zebra Designer Pro 2. Um, icon up in the uh, computer that you can see there. So uh, let's get and click on that and begin. Now I'm making the assumption that you already have a thermal printer attached to your uh, computer so um, when you load the software in fact it will actually sense the thermal printer and that should be uh, uh, loaded onto your PC and the uh, uh, Zebra Designer Pro will in fact interface uh, with that. Uh, now let's start from the beginning. When you first open it up, it's going to ask you to uh, create a new label or recently used. Uh, for formatting a label, let's just say create and say finish. And immediately it'll pop up another window and this is where it's going to ask you to set things, uh, start setting things up. Now the first one is going to ask you to select a printer. So uh, over here you'll see where it says ZT230. Uh, I'm actually using this one here where I have copy one. Uh, this is the one I'm going to be using, so I'm going to select this. This is the printer I'm going to use. Always make sure you do the selection. Properties, don't worry about the properties right now, although I'm going to click on there and, and kind of show you, but you can always go back and change the properties. Now this is the properties of the printer itself. The only things that I want to change here is always, I'm going to leave it at one copy because you can select how many labels you want to print through the software package we're going to talk about. Print speed is 4, darkness 15, um, inch. Leave, it, leave everything as it is because you're going to change all of this um, in the package itself. The things that you won't change in the package you can but you won't necessarily as I'm going to leave the speed at 4, that's 4 inches per second, the darkness at 15, uh, the width and all that I'll select later on. Now advanced setup and this is where I want it to be is the ZT230 that I have. Uh, it always pops up as a direct, a therm, a direct thermal printer, thermal direct as it says here. Uh, but in fact, I'm using the uh, thermal transfer option, so I'm going to click on that. Uh, over in here, you have tear off, rewind, peel off applicator, stream, you have cutter. Uh, I'm just going to do a tear off. If you have a rewind, peel off naturally, uh, you'll select those. But tear off means it actually presents one label and you can rip that label off and uh, use it and so forth. <coughs> now, even if you leave it a tear off and you want to take and print a whole slew of labels, that doesn't mean you have to tear it off. Um, and then the other thing down here is calibrate. Uh, this is just a quick calibration and hopefully you'll hear it. I'm doing a quick calibration on the machine. Actually I don't have to because the machine does a calibration every time you turn it on or you open and close the head. So uh, we're kind of good to go there. Uh, so now I'm going to say, now that I selected it, did my properties that I wanted to, I'm going to say next gives you standard print mode or store label. I never store because I do a save as. I save it into the hard drive under label formats and so forth. That's really up to you. So I'm going to say standard uh, print mode, which is next. Down in here, I never use this. This is uh, if you have multiple uh, label type, uh, label stocks that you're using, uh, whether it's you know, polypropylenes, any synthetic uh, paper labels. Um, you know, pretty much I don't use this because uh, I always save the different label formats that I have anyways. And most of you, in fact, only deal with one type, which is paper. Uh, but Or you may have a synthetic, so you deal with just a synthetic. So I'd say I almost ignore this. 
Over here, uh, automatically set dimension, label dimensions by default, or select page size. I'm going to do select page size. Uh, and let me talk a little bit about uh, this software package. Most software packages, when you're setting up a label, they set up the label, the page size as well as the label size, according to how it's coming out of the printer. This package does it a little bit different where, and I'm not saying it's wrong, it's probably the right way, it actually sets it up according to um, it actually sets it up according to how you're going to use or the label you're looking at the label. As an example, this would be uh, a label. It comes off of a roll, but I tore one off just to show you. This, the, the machine looks at it when it's coming out of the machine, looks at it this way. Uh, so this, you normally would say this is the width, width, this is the length or the height. But for this package, software package, when it talks about the width, it's actually talking about the how you're looking at it. So the width would be six inches and the height would be four inches. Also, that's the label. Now the page, because you have a liner, this add 0 0.09 inches uh, to it to account for the label for the liner, both top to bottom, left to right. So keep that in mind when it says page size, label size, two different things. So here what we're going to do, and you're going to see a change here because it's somewhat confusing until we change it around. We're going to say 6.09 and then we're going to say 4.09 and I'll show you now. You notice that both of those change. I'm going to go to the next. Here it's asking me for the how the orientation is going to be. And if you look down here, I want the reading matter to come out where the reading matter is up on the top over here. And if you notice, it changed. So that's kind of important. Now that I did that, I'm going to go back and you'll see where this will come up where it's supposed to. With now that's the page size we're talking about here. Later we're going to get into the label size. So I'll hit next. I got the landscape. I don't need to rotate it. Rotation means how do you want the information to come come out uh, and it's a 180 degree rotation. I don't need a rotation. I'm fine with that and that's what I want. Next I'm going to go to here. Here now it's asking me for the label dimensions. Once again the width is 6 inches. The height 4 inches. Uh, margins. I never load any margins because I'm moving the reading matter around myself. Columns. It's going to be uh, you know one label after another. Generally, when it talks about columns, that's if you have one up, two up, three up. So any of you that are using smaller labels where you might have two or three up, that's where you'll change your columns to uh, to actually load a different information into those columns and so forth. For here, though, we're using straight rolls of four by six labels, and I'm going to say finish, and there's where it's at. So now let's go up to the top toolbars up here. Up here, you'll see a series of these things. The only one that you're really concerned with is this one in here where you do your either opening existing labels, you're going to do a save as label, or you're going to change something on your label setup, printer settings, or when you want to print. Uh, over in here, as you can see, there's not too much you're going to mess with in here. View, if you want to zoom in and out of the label, that's really up to you, but there's not too much in here you're really going to mess with. Uh, objects, everything you see here is already over here, so you don't even need to mess with that. Database, and I'll discuss this in a different video, when you want to link a database to a label. Uh, and the next video I do will be uh, linking an Excel database to uh, a label using Zebra Designer Pro. Um, and I'm going to show people how to do that, but that's a separate video. Tools, window, help, you know what that's all about. Uh, so let's get on here. This is where you're really going to concentrate a lot of your time. Uh, or we are today, in fact. Let's do a fixed text. And once again, I'm, I know I'm rushing through this, but I want to get everything done here. Let's do a fixed text here, and I'm reaching around the camera, so I apologize if it looks like I'm uh, somewhat messed up here. Okay, GMIT label. It's uh, text one. That's ba basically what it's going to call call it. I'm going to leave it that way. We can name it whatever we want, but I'm going to leave it that way. Now here, you can start selecting the... Uh, the font size you want and so forth, the font you want and the font size. Uh, we're going to do that all in one shot. I'll do this one to show you. Um, and I'm going to come up here use a true type font, Arial. And I'm going to leave it bold and I'm going to pick 20. And I'm going to say OK. And I'm done with this one. So there it is. I have that formatted. It's sitting there and I'm going to park this puppy right over here. And I'm going to go to my next one so I can be a little bit expedient about this. Now. 
instead of a fix we're going to go to a keyboard input what this means is you're going to want uh, you, you before you print the label it's going to prompt you to load information into it because it's changing from label to label uh, so be very careful when you use it it's a good thing to have if the information changes but if the information isn't changing from label to label be careful when you use it because it's going to keep asking you all the time to load that information prompt text for for this variable field um, we're going to call this let's see what we're going to call this oh we're going to call this sock size how's that sound text field and we're going to say uh, 10 characters you can make it 9 8 7 10 11 12 whatever you want we're going to say 10 characters value is required what we're going to say is hey you got to load something before you move on now on this you can check this off which means it's just going to print whatever you put in here last time um, but you can still change it so we're going to say value is required just so I can show you format you have your choice all characters alphanumeric numeric currency uh, for this purpose we're just going to say all characters and then we're going to hit next prefix well prefix before it prints the value we input we're going to have it always print sock size and then as you notice the next fade away we're going to hit finish and that's how it's going to look now we're going to change this size once we get done here but I want to do a second one and the reason why is to show you how it prompts the information that you want this one here we're going to call color and same thing number of uh, characters 10 8 doesn't really matter value required we're going to use all characters and we're going to go to next prefix we want it to print all the time sock size and we could all cap this we cannot all cap this and then we're going to hit finish and we've got that sitting there uh, oh I'm sorry that was supposed to be color so let's double click on this and go back let's say next we wanted to call this color see how easy that was to uh, change oops okay we got the color we finished it so now we got the uh, color in here now let me show you how we could change these real quick we could just highlight them both notice how they're both highlighted and we're going to come up here and we're going to do aerial and we're going to make this 20 also so if you notice now when I say highlight click hold and just highlight the two that's what I'm talking about is highlighting it so if you wanted to change your your uh, character sizes on all of these very quickly just highlight everything that's on your label and then select your font and your size and so forth so we have that done now let's do uh, let's do a sequential count and once again we're just messing around here here's a uh, counter so we're going to go ahead and select counter we clicked out over here starting value one prompt for the value what that means is right before you start printing where do you want to start at so that let's say you left off at 12 and you want it to start at 13 that's the reason why you want it to prompt and we're going to put a one in there and number of digits we're going to say three let's say three and do you want to increment or de uh, uh, decrement? Decrement. We're going to increment means we're going to count up versus counting down. And then we're going to hit, and then it says also change value one. Every label we want it to change, and also we want it to roll over. And I'm doing this just for demo purposes. I want it to roll over at four, so I can show you this a little bit later. And uh, then we're going to hit next. And do we need a prefect? Yes, let's call this number of cases. So we got that loaded in. We're going to say finish. We're done. Once again, we'll select our uh, font that we want. Okay, and same thing. We're going to say 20 point. Got that done. So that puppy's loaded in there too, and we'll move this one down a little bit. Also, if you want to move it to keyboard, uh, hold control and then use your arrows uh, up, down, left, or right to move it around, uh, to move things around real easy rather than moving it with a mouse and so forth. Okay, next thing, let's go back up here to uh, text, and 
I'm going to put a date field in here uh, just to kind of show you that. First you select the uh, format you want it. Most people are used to uh, month, day, and year, month, you know, the two-digit month, two-digit day, and a four-digit year. So we're going to take that. Now here it asks you for the date offset. Uh, what this would really use for is you can in fact um, use this as an expiration. In other words, whatever you're running today, let's say it expires in 30 days or something like that. So you can put 30 up here, which is what we're going to do. And then we're going to hit um, next. And over here we're going to put on packed on. How's that sign? Or expires. Expires on. You can use best buy, best before, whatever it may be. But this is just the, uh, for our purposes, we're just picking anything so we can uh, very quickly. Let's format this one. Once again, most cases I'll just take and set all these fields up and then later I'll just highlight everything and select what I want. Uh, but I'm doing this just for demo purposes. Expires on uh, 1031. Now you notice I had 30 days. Today is actually October 1st. It advanced it. So, and the same thing, if you called this label up again tomorrow and you started packing, it'll come up probably November, if not probably, it'll come up November 1st. So if your products are always expiring within 30 days, that's what, what you could do. Now, if you wanted to change this, it's very easy. Uh, you could actually take the uh, take this off zero, and then we can come over here. We can actually say uh, packed on. and say finished. Now, if you notice the date, which is today's date, 10-1-2015. Packed on 10 1 2015. See how easy it is to change and so forth. So it actually works out kind of uh, nice. Then the uh, last thing I might want to talk about is no, I don't think so. You also have a time field here, and then you have database and you have a link field. These I'll get into as well as what I showed you up here when I do a separate uh, database. This is just time consuming, and I'm trying to keep the uh, video to a uh, short amount of time as possible. Let's go over to, and this is where most people uh, get into it. The only other thing that most people get into is probably maybe a barcode. And let's do a fixed barcode here. You notice I clicked on that. So the uh, first thing that I'm going to do is down here uh, where it says code. Well, let's do a UPC code. So I click over here. I come down here. I look for a UPC A. I say OK. Um, if you notice, it can give you your height and it can give you your width, which is a narrow bar width. And basically we're going to go with a 2. Let's take the height at uh, 0.5. And then check digits. It will automatically generate a check digit, which you need. Human readable, uh, below the barcode. Details includes the uh, quiet zones and then general. We got to load uh, and we can say okay on this, and then we got to load the information into it. So, what's nice about this, let me show you one, two, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, zero, one. Now, if you notice, it only took two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Um, characters and then it stopped. It won't let, let me enter anything else in because that's exactly what it needs and if you didn't enter enough it would actually come back and tell you you needed to uh, put the proper in there so it's kind of a foolproof thing. Oops we have a too short. Let's go back to uh, oh, let's cancel out of this. I want to go under the barcode here and uh, let's define this because we actually defined it wrong. This should be uh, 0 0.50. And, and you, if you saw what I did, I actually had 0, 0, 0 on here, which kind of messed it up a little bit. So we're going to say OK and then finish. And there's our UPC code. Once again, if you wanted to change that again, uh, you go in here, define. And if you notice, I took that from 2 to 3. Now I'll take out the 2. I'm going to leave my height the same as what it was. And I'm going to say OK finish and as you notice this came up uh, fairly nice so that looks pretty good 
Once again, I'm just bouncing around to show you things, but your check digits are in there, your uh, characters that you load it's in there, the barcode's there, uh, so it all seems to be working very nice. Now, let's get on to, so we took care of the uh, barcodes. There's a whole other thing, putting counters in barcodes. That's a whole different subject and so forth, but uh, at least we covered a barcode. Let's do a picture. Click on the picture thing, click on the uh, where your label is. Let's just do a browse and pick the first thing we find. Right here. And we're going to say finish. There you go. There's the uh, graphic that we just picked. That's how easy it is. Remember, you can have your own preloaded graphics. A lot of people will load, for instance, drawings of uh, nuts and bolts or tools, that kind of stuff where they can actually load it in there so you can show what's inside the box or what's inside the package, whatever that may be. Uh, rectangle, that's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, once again, I click on this and then it gives me the rectangle uh, symbol and I just draw this little puppy like this and that looks kind of thick to me so I'll double click on it uh, horizontally I think I'll make this a uh, 5 0 5 I should say and also I think on the uh, vertical bar I'll put uh, 0 0.05 also on that one and then I'll say uh, finish and you can see we kind of cleaned that up a little bit so it looks a lot a lot better and so forth so uh, to move it around, you can resize it just by grabbing it as soon as you get the double arrow, uh, grab it, and then uh, pull it up, but you can reposition it and so forth. And then the same thing when you get down in here, you have uh, where you could draw just a line. Now you can change the width of the line by grabbing it like that. Uh, and then you have an, an eclipse, which is a circle. Now let's talk a little bit about inverse printing because that's always important. Um, we have this right here, GMIT label. Let's say, for instance, we wanted to highlight that or inverse print. When we click on it, you'll see a little box right here. Click on the inverse, say finish, and that's what you get. And if we did everything right, we should be able to print this label because we do have uh, pretty much all this is covered. The barcodes are down here, which we actually selected up there. But down here, it'll list the, uh, the different uh, style uh, barcodes that you can select from. But uh, pretty much we went through all of this, but let's do a file print, see what we get. Because it should prompt us for some information. Ah, there it is. There's the first one, sock size. So we're going to say 8.5. Then the next one, color. We're going to say blue. Then the next one, we want it to start at 1. So we said 1. And we're going to tell it to print uh, 4 labels and we're going to say print and if you can hear the printer I'm going to tear this off just so I can uh, so I can show you as you can see this is the label that we just printed you'll see all the information just as it appears on the screen it comes out on the label pretty nice printing you can also see number of cases uh, one, two, three, because we have that Connor going in there, four. So we do have the Connor happening over there, which, uh, you know, which works out pretty nice, but I think that, uh, that label looks pretty darn good. And that's everything that we just showed on the uh, screen. So that's kind of a quick overview. Once again, do a save. In this case, I would normally go like this here, do a save as, and I'll pick where I'm going to put it and then save the label and give it a good name and so forth. In this case, I'm not going to do that, but that gives you a quick overview on how to, um, you know, how to actually uh, format the uh, label and so forth. Once again, I'm going to do another video at linking databases with an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, so, in fact, if you have a couple hundred customers and the customers aren't changing that much, but maybe some information within the label, I'll show you how you can set that database up with one label format and then bam, all you have to do is hit print. It'll print all your labels in one shot. So you're not doing this all individually. This is just a rough means to show you how to uh, get in there and start messing around and stuff like that. You're really not gonna mess anything, mess anything up and so forth. But uh, hopefully this video, you find it helpful. Once again, if you have any questions, please call GMIT at 704-786-0951. Um, or, you know, if you're looking at this on YouTube, uh, you can visit uh, www.gmitlabel.com. Thank you.